I don't know why this was the thing that kind of broke the straw of the Bobo's back, but I just wish companies, and I hope that companies would just spend a little more time doing uh, research on the channel. A while ago, I made a video where I said this. Usually I decline these offers because there's something like a TAC vest or TAC vest mask accessory bundle that are obviously way too small for a person like me. I'm pretty tall and I'm pretty big. It's not gonna fit, so I can't really review it. And for today's video, I have gone against that. I was hit up by a company called Who Want Me, we'll see about that, asking if I'd like to check out one of their TAC vests they sell on Amazon, and I clearly have it right here. I have not opened it up. I'm gonna see if I was wrong. Maybe cheap TAC vests can be good. Let's find out. In the package, there are a couple of things. I, like I said, I have not looked in here. You got some darts. These are those uh, harder yet squishy tipped elite styles. You have something in here, some sort of strap, more darts, some iPro. I guess I should probably test this out. Some other thing, a knockoff mag, and the tack vest itself. Let's take a closer look at all this stuff. So the exact items that come inside the package include a magazine, a six shot magazine to be exact, an elastic headband that loses its color when you stretch it out. So if you have bigger heads like I do, uh, it's not gonna be that blue, white, and black. It's gonna be uh, very much white all over. You have an elastic wrist dart holder that also kind of loses color when you stretch it. A dump pouch that is not very big a bandana slash neck thing. You can uh, open it up and put your your head through it. Uh, wear it on yourself. Tie it around like a normal bandana. But I think the best part about it is uh, all the different, it's called the multifunctional seamless wear. And some of the highlights on their little diagram include the blind chicken. Alice band, which I'm guessing might be an Alice in Chains reference. I'm not really sure. The pirates, and of course, hip hop. That, that those are the wonderful things you can do with this this multifunctional seamless wear. Cool. You also have some safety glasses, which are very cheap feeling. At least they bend real easily. Might do a tortured chest on these to see if they can handle something a bit more powerful than a stock blaster. And you also get the tack vest itself, which has come with a slightly plasticky, funky smell to it. I like to go over some of the more notable items in this package. I'm fine with the headband, I'm fine with the elastic wrist strap, and I'm totally cool with the, the multifunctional seamless wear. Um, I like to go over the magazine, the dump pouch, the eye pro, and the vest in more detail because I think there's more to talk about with them. Let's start with the magazine. The magazine feels like a lesser quality Nerf mag. It doesn't have that plasticky thickness to it. It bulges pretty easily when I squeeze it, especially right here on it. The spring tension in it is all right, but there is grinding going on in this. Like there is obvious friction when I push down on it. Worse on this side. Um, it should not take as much force as I'm giving it to push that uh, platform down. Uh, I feel like if I drop this, it's going to break. You know what? Let's try it right now. Let's, let's drop this and see if it breaks off camera. All right, there's one. Okay, it seems to be all right. Still a little bit of stickiness. Not as much though. Let's try dropping it again. All right. And uh, apparently I have seemed to loosen up the platform. I don't know, oh, not on this side, but on this side I have. It's just not good quality. It squeezes, it bends. It Every time I've dropped it, I feel like it's going to shatter and hurt me. Stick to worker mags, stick to Nerf mags, stick to the stuff that we know is good. Then again, uh, what would you expect out of this package magazine wise? The dump pouch uh, is a dump pouch, obviously. Uh, it just doesn't hold that much. It can fit the six round mag, and that's about it. There's a little bit of room for squishing some darts on the side. I have 20 darts. I wanna see if it can hold all 20 of them, and if it can, how much extra room does it have? Because this comes with 30 darts. And uh, this thing's looking a bit bulgy. 
So it can hold 20 darts. I'm sure you can get up to about 25 in here, but that's the, the most it can hold. It's not great. It, it does have some use, but I feel like if you're gonna have a dump pouch, it should be bigger and hold more ammo or a larger magazine uh, or multiple smaller magazines to make it really worthwhile. The build quality of it isn't bad. It does have this little strap on the back so you can put it on your belt. It's not bad quality, it's just really small. And lastly, we have the iPro, which as I stated is very bendy, easy to bend. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this. I know there's leverage right here, but still, even up here, does not take a lot of force to bend these around. I'm curious to see how strong they are. And I know that they're not selling it to the NIC players, the ultra stock players. This is more for kids in their backyard, but I wanna know uh, how easily this is damaged. And I, it's already come scratched out of the, out of the box. Um, yeah, that's nice, cool. There's some scratches, some little abrasions on here. Let's see how strong this thing is. I'm gonna shoot it with a modified uh, long shot, has a Artifact Hunter kit in it, and a, uh, I forget what spring load, it's decent. We're gonna shoot it with a, an AccuFake, we're gonna shoot it with a half-length dart with one of these rubber solid tipped heads, and a Southeast Slug. Again, I understand what the market is for, I understand who the market is for, uh, but I feel if you're going to make eye protection, you should probably make it pretty decent right off the bat. So I'm gonna be shooting this from about five feet away. Let's start with the AccuFake. All right, so I got hit by the tip and it took two shots to get out. Let's see how it fared. All right, looking all right, looking pretty okay. Decent, I'll give that a pass. Let's go to the orange solid dome. All right, that went flying. Let's go see how it held up. I can see where it got hit. I don't know if you can, but right there. Things are still holding up pretty good. Awesome, let's upgrade to the Southeast Slug. Another solid hit. And I'm actually surprised to report that these have held up. There's just a little bit of a, a dent right there from where it got hit, uh, right there in the plastic. So really, I think the only thing, I'm, I'm really surprised with this, but I think the only thing you have to worry about is something bending it like that. Yeah, there we go. So your, your breaking points are gonna be where these attach on. Doesn't take a lot of strength to do that, let's see. Okay, cool. So yeah, the stress point right in the middle, not breaking. And it doesn't shatter, which I which which is really good uh, in case you are curious about, you know, plastic breaking into your kids' eyes or something. Yeah, I'm actually really surprised by those. Those held up way better than I thought. So, good job. Ooh, want me? That's really good. Again, surprise, and I'm happy that they are uh, safer than I expected. That's always good. And lastly, let's talk about the TAC vest itself. So the TAC vest has a couple of features. It has these little ammo loops right here. It is also pretty adjustable. You have these little straps right here and they can be Velcroed off, looped through here like so. And you can adjust the size accordingly on both sides. It also has this mesh on the back, which is good. So your back doesn't get all sweaty and it has some little pockets on the side for your ammo. So you don't really need the dump pouch, which does attach uh, really anywhere. It can attach onto the, the little straps right here. You can attach it to this carabiner, which is nice. Um, it has some little elastic -y bits. So I'm guessing if you wanna hold a mag right there, you could totally do it if your body size allows. That's nice, cool. Um, the material overall is very light. Doesn't, doesn't have like a thickness to it, but I'm sure it will hold up. Mostly it's the seams I would worry about, but the tack vest is, is not terrible. For a child, it would say it's not terrible. Um, yeah, if your kid's just playing in the backyard and wants to have a cool little tack vest, oh, well, there you go. Overall, I am kind of surprised by this kit. The quality is not the best, uh, especially with the magazine, but 
it's a cool little kit, and if you want to get one for a kid to make them feel, well, cooler during a Nerf war, or make them feel more tactical or more Millicent, whatever, uh, I would say, yeah, sure, 20 bucks, which is what this sells for, is not a bad deal. It's not the greatest quality thing, but if you want something cheap, totally down for this. And if you want a kit that maybe is in a different theme or with a little bit of a different look, Who Want Me is not the only company that sells that, and I really have no problem with this kit. I do, however, have a problem with the company, and companies like them. My problem isn't them trying to get reviews of their stuff or contacting me as a person to do reviews of their stuff because that makes sense. It's a nerfing vest. I have a nerfing channel. It's, it's a similar market. That, that's all perfectly fine. My issue happens when there's no research done on the channel they intend to email. So for example, this vest, this vest kit, it's for nerfing. The channel does nerfing. Cool. That, that all works out. Check mark there. Um, but the guy who runs the channel doesn't look like a kid. I'm a big 6'4", 250 pound guy. Uh, this vest is for a kid. If I can't fit into the vest, then I can't really review the vest accurately. You know, I can tell you what it looks like, I can tell you how it feels, I can tell you the accessories, but how does it fit? Does it fit well? Is it something that someone that is a kid would want to wear? I can't tell you that. Um, you know, maybe the company should ask if I have a kid or if I know of a kid that could help me out with this so I can review it properly outside of just talking about all the things I just said. That would have been a really good question to ask. The train of thought to ask more questions that fit the product takes so little time and looking into the channel to see if it's the type of channel that you want to send something to also takes so little time. And I've been offered products to review that have nothing to do with my overall theme. And the two most outside of the theme items uh, that were also some of my most favorite offerings I've ever gotten were some really crappy Chineseum eyeshadow makeup and a nursing bra. And I, of course, said yes to both of them while also giving an explanation that my channel uh, was not really the type of thing for these products. And surprisingly, I got the makeup. I still have the makeup, it's somewhere, and I really need to do a video on it because I think it'll be really funny. But the company who sent out the nursing bra said that I wasn't who they expected. I was not the person they were looking for, which makes no sense because they were the people who sent the email out and they obviously did no research, which, which is annoying. It's a waste of my time, it's a waste of your time. And it takes so little time to do. I'll never shoot down free stuff, but it bothers me that you would send me something that I can't review well. I've probably said this a couple of times so far, but I, I wish I could review this well for you so it would have been worth the time. Uh, it really hasn't. Uh, so I don't know why this was the thing that kind of broke the straw of the Bobo's back, but I just wish companies, and I hope that companies would just spend a little more time doing uh, research on the channels that they plan to email. I know sending out a million emails is super easy to do on YouTube because the email links are right there and it's easy to get back a couple of nibbles for a small amount of time. But if I feel like if you spent just a tiny bit more time researching the channels, you would get better bites, if that makes sense. You would get bites from people that you would want to do reviews of this because they could do it better than I can. There's only so much I can do with this type of stuff uh, and yeah, I'm just, I, bleh. I like free stuff, but come on, come on, really? <sighs> But you know who isn't the straw that broke the Bobo's back? My Patreon supporters, the wonderful people who go above and beyond watching a few YouTube ads and support my channel through the Patreon platform. We have Ryan Cho, Biggs NZ, Ali No, Scott Tomlin, CJ, Ozzy Nerf, and Foam Blast. These people are wonderful for supporting this channel through the Patreon platform. And if you would like to support the channel through the Patreon platform, there's always a link down in the description box that you can go check out. And if you don't want to support through Patreon, think about buying a Bobo patch or checking out the new Bobo merch store where I got some angry Bobo face t-shirts. That's right, merch store is open. I'll be adding some more stuff to it in the future. But for now, I got some t-shirts that you can check out. And I'm also gonna thank the company that sent this out to me for, well, sending it out to me. And if you would like to actually buy this or maybe a different version of this, I'll have a link down in the description as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. And as always, have a great day wherever you are.